Hey y'all, it's Ashley Booker. I'm, I'm sitting very, very weirdly, sitting on my knees. So, here is the infamous 2021 bookshelf tour. I don't think I've ever done like a full bookshelf tour. I think I've tried to split it up into categories and then like I never follow up with it. It's the strangest thing. So I decided to do a full length bookshelf tour. I am not gonna pull every book out. I, first of all, I own too many books. It's not gonna happen. I will show you the shelves and I'll probably pull out some of my favorites, talk a little bit about what's on the shelf and that's pretty much it. I don't even, the way that the shelves are set up and the way that like the space is in the living room, it's kind of hard for me to even do a shelf overview. Okay, I had to adjust my sitting because it was just getting horrible. It's hard for me to do a shelf overview because the shelves are actually really, really low. So whenever you see me filming, I'm actually sitting on the floor. My shelves are low because when I moved here, it was just like one of those things like I was pregnant and I wanted to make sure that the shelves were secure enough because I was going to have a baby. And I knew that we probably were going to be here at least until she started walking, which clearly she is. And just as a safety precaution, I didn't want to put up shelves that were too high. Now, hopefully you know in the future when we move again I will have a separate area where I will be able to have bigger bookshelves but for right now I don't so the shelf overview is going to be kind of on the difficult side so we're just going to go section by section I'll explain how I have my books split up I will talk a little bit about the books on the shelves pull out some of my favorites or whatever the case may be some of these shelves are double stacked so this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be a fun video to edit. I mean, it's totally not gonna be, but you know, totally being facetious. So let's go ahead, get started. I hope y'all enjoy. Okay, so this is the very first shelf that sits in the corner that y'all typically don't see. This is my middle grade shelf. And what you can see is up top here, I have, well, besides the, the modem from the internet, I have my Brandon Sanderson, Alcatraz versus the Evil Librarians books up there, Nooks and Crannies, a uh, coloring book, and then my big Percy Jackson book and my One Day at Disney book, which I got. It's a coffee table book, really, but I got that when I used to blog and I was doing a blog tour for that. So on this top shelf, we have the Real McCoys series off to the <laughs> off to the left here and then part of the Wings of Fire series in the Unwanted series by Lisa McMahon. Over here we have my School for Good and Evil books and then over here on this side we have my Goosebumps and my Babysitter Clubs books. So these are actually not in order. They should be in order but they're not. In order at all and then as we get down this is where we start to see some of my Percy Jackson collection not all of it I'll show you the rest of the Percy Jackson collection when I actually um, get to the books that are behind it so then this is the rest of the middle grade um, front desk definitely one of my favorites so that's front desk absolutely love that one uh my sharon draper collection which includes seller stella by starlight and also blend it and then i talk about these all the time which is my rita williams garcia collection which starts with one crazy summer we have another readers williams garcia book clayton bird goes underground and then as we get along here you see my Jumbies collection, and then, I don't know why this is here. This is not supposed to be here. But my Jumbies collection books are here. Um, some Jason Reynolds, Body Magic is here as well. And then a children's mystery book. And then these two books, which I haven't read, which I, I need to read sometime this month is uh, Linda Williams Jackson's books Midnight Without a Moon and then the second one is A Sky Full of Stars which they're absolutely beautiful covers but I haven't read them yet and then of course one that I did read last year that I loved was I Can Make This Promise. Okay so I took some of the books off here we have my series of unfortunate events books 
and then some random books which small spaces is really really good by Catherine Arden this is a very 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 good middle grade series I don't know why I mean some people have read it but I don't know and then this duology is really good the war that saved my life and the war I finally fought one by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley love the first one haven't read the second one this is one that I absolutely love Fever 1793 by Lori Halls Anderson. I haven't read it in a while, but this is one that I actually got signed by her because she came to talk at my job and I got her to sign it. These are a couple that I haven't read. The In Between, Loki's Wolves, and The Mysterious Benedict Society, which this is a very popular series at the library. A lot of kids love that series. I just haven't read it yet. Okay, and then in this back session right here, we have two random scholastic books a little princess which i haven't read in years pegasus which is one that i've been meaning to read because uh it's based on greek mythology as well and then the book scavenger which i have started and need to finish soon okay so like i said before on here you can kind of see where my rick Ryden presents books start and then in the back here we have my um, Percy Jackson and the Heroes of Olympus series and then I have part of the Magnus Chase books over here and I don't know why these are like grossly out of order y'all because I definitely own I think the first two books in this series and I own the entire Kane Chronicle series and then here's some more Rick Riordan presents so Sal and Gabby and then Dragon Pearl by Yoon Han Lee and then behind here, I think, is where you'll see. <laughs> yeah, okay. So here you see the rest of my Magnus Chase books. My, I don't know why they're so out of order. But my Magnus Chase books, as well as some of the uh, Trials of Apollo books and the rest of the Cain Chronicles books. So this entire shelf basically has been dedicated to Rick Riordan and the Rick Riordan Presents lines like... I'm so in love, such a fan, if you can't tell, like in that corner over there, the rest of my Percy Jackson books. I'm currently reading a couple of them, so yeah. Okay, so what you can't see, or what may be a little bit hard to see because of the camera angle, but these are my uh, Brandon Mole box sets. So this one is the Five Kingdoms series, and then this one is the Beyonders trilogy. I have the Candy Shop Wars duology, the first book in the Fable Haven series. I have the first couple books in the um, Charlie Hernandez series. I haven't read those yet. And then I have some other ones which I'm going to move up here so you can see. So I also have um, Other Words for Home by Jasmine Warga and then The Girl Who Drank the Moon. Okay, so that was essentially my, my middle grade shelf. Um, there's some over on this side that I think kind of... Uh, they can be classified as middle grade but they kind of play between middle grade and YA as well so I'm going to show you I'm going to show you what's on top in a second but I'm going to go ahead and do this shelf right here so one of my favorite books of last year of course was um, Genesis Begins again I keep most of my middle grade to YA contemporary on this shelf and most of not most all of the authors that are on this shelf are authors of color so I know people laugh at me and they're like you keep your book separated I do keep my book separated and you'll see later on so this one once again some stuff out of order so Nick Stone I usually keep right here so I own most of Nick Stone's books at this point I think I just don't have her middle grade books so I do have Jackpot Odd One Out, Dear Justice, and Dear Martin, Punching the Air, um, which came out last year, More Happy Than Not. This is one that I just talked about in my Blackathon books on my radar that I'm thinking about reading this month. And then here, once again, y'all are gonna see quickly, like, I, I just don't keep my stuff in order. I wish I did a better job at that, but I, I just, I don't. Um, my two Christina Forrest books, Elizabeth Acevedo, I keep here. Jason Reynolds, I usually keep all his stuff over there, but this ended up there. Quick A Meze, um, I usually keep all of my Tiffany B. Jackson books together, but 
you know, we all love Bookshelf, this organization here, because there's Grown, um, Slay, Goldie Vance, which I read, Slay, I plan to reread, Grown was one of my favorites last year. If you've never read Kwame Alexander, this is one of his other books that I had not read, but I really, really like his writing style, which is the crossover. And then Jewel Parker Rhodes, which I read her other book, By Magic, last year. The Marrow Thieves, more Sharon Draper, but this is Sharon Draper's YA stuff. Um, she writes across several different age categorizations. And then Jason Reynolds, of course, Long Way Down, All American Boys. As we get further down, we get to kind of see my adult SFF collection primarily written by black authors so I have a small collection of Octavia E. Butler. We see River Solomon stuff, Marlon James, Nella Hopkinson. I actually was supposed to haul this book and I completely forgot to haul it for January but this is one that took me forever and a day to find and this is The Salt Roads by Nala Hopkinson. So happy to have this as a hardcover copy. I found it via eBay and it's very very hard to find because it's out of print. So I was able to snatch that up for an affordable price very very surprisingly. Uh, then I have my N.K. Jemison collection. As we move on here we see my small Daddy Akorapur collection. I am currently, I currently have her other book Who Fears Death off the shelf because I'm reading it and then um, of course Ken Lu, Grace of Kings, El Penelope, The Year of the Witching which I really really enjoyed last year. We Hunt the Flame and then I have one more N.K. Jemisin book right here because it doesn't fit right there. I forgot to mention Jade City which I have not read yet. Uh, Gods of Jade and Shadow. I have two smaller like novellas here which is um, The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Niveau. And then Mapping the Interior by Stephen Graham Jones, which I need to read because it's a phenomenal writer. Black Sun, which I'm still technically reading right now. <laughs> I just haven't picked it up in a while. This is My America, which is one of my favorites from last year. And then, whoops, um, The Henner Wars, which I've heard great things about. And then here on the very, very bottom, what you're going to see is where I keep most of my nonfiction although some of it is mixed in I mean it's I really feel like I just have no bookshelf organization like it goes where it goes when I feel like putting it in that section and that's just how it is so this is one that I wanted to read last year but I didn't get to it um the love the loveless world by Susan Ab Abul Hawa and I did not get to it I'm hoping to get to it of course Barack Obama's memoir, In Search of Sisterhood, which is about my sorority, which is Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. I have Rick Ross's autobiography on here. I don't know why Toni Morrison is sitting right here. Um, Nickel Boys, Water Dancer, um, White Feminism, which I am currently making my way through. Of course, Medical Apartheid, Stamp from the Beginning, um, The Warmth of Other Suns. I just recently talked about this one. And the Black History Month tag, Behold the Dreamers, which is one of the most interesting books that I've read in terms of looking at the meaning of the American dream. Over here I have a stack which I'm not gonna go through the entire stack, but uh, Attica Locke is a person, a black mystery writer that I'm hoping to read soon. Heads of Color People short story collection that I've heard nothing but great things about. I have some translated works on here. Love in the Time of Cholera is here that I said I wanted to read. Um, the Secret Women by Sheila Williams, which I meant to get to last year and didn't get to it. Queen Sugar is also right there. Um, this is the reason why I asked, like, why, was, <laughs> why is the bluest eye right there? Because the rest of my Toni Morrison books that I own are right here, which is, I have Sula, and then I also have jazz which I'm I'm trying to work up the courage y'all to get into the rest of Toni Morrison's books because the bluest eye just really really tore my soul apart then I have these two which I was meaning to get to last year once again and didn't get to uh black girls must die exhausted I'm really excited for that and then I also have the follow-up 
black girls must die exhausted and baby makes two and these two i believe are independently published but i was very very excited when i read the description of both the girl with the louding voice which i know a lot of people loved of course the vanishing half here which everyone was reading last year such a fun age everyone was reading that and then ties that tether which i just got my audio copy of this just came in but i got this one via book of the month and then my two books with the poppy war which i was supposed to be reading with erica but i'm a complete failure when it comes to reading stuff when i'm supposed to read it but i do have the first two books of the poppy war trilogy okay so now looking up top if you did not realize i have a lot of elephants and i have a lot of elephants because like i said i am a delta so there's elephants everywhere if you did not notice so this top of this shelf is kind of like strangely done i had stuff organized where i was i had like red and green books because i was trying to have everything set up for christmas sorry if that blurred out a little bit so these are books that i have up here that traditionally live on my shelves but i put up there because it was red and green covers but i never moved them back and i don't plan on moving them back because you know space so these are the ones there's more octavia e butler up there more nk jemison tiffany d jackson up there more jason reynolds up there uh cartel is up there uh zarada cordova uh jasmine ward black enough which is one that I really want to read this year. This is a short story collection that was edited by E.B. Zaboy that features a lot of good authors that I enjoy like Rita Williams Garcia, Jason Reynolds, Nick Stone, Renee Watson, Tracy Baptiste, um, Brandy Colbert, E.B. Zaboy, Lamar Giles. They all were a part of that and I think there's even something, a dedication to Walter Dean Myers which I'm excited for. Dorothy Must Die is a interesting YA retelling of The Wizard of Oz done by Danielle Page. Um, I think that most of her books are just kind of okay. Um, Kwame Alexander did kind of a reimagining of Muhammad Ali's story with James Patterson's line which no longer exists. Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Whitson. Absolutely love this book love Jacqueline Whitson, huge fan. Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa, which I have not read but have heard excellent things about. And then these are some of Baby's picture books that I keep up here. Um, most of these are ones that I have actually received for review but they're hers but she's just not old enough to have access to them because she'll tear the pages don't mind the mess on the other side because there's more picture books over there too some of my favorites of course are soul way um hidden figures woke is really good great poetry watch me i actually got to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the author of that one i just reviewed c is for country not too long ago so that's what that top shelf is it's a mishmash of different stuff like you've noticed already i don't keep myself like super super organized i mean i just kind of fit stuff where i can fit it um now we're going to transition and i'm going to show you what's behind all these books because i think all three shelves on this huge shelf are actually double stacked so one second okay so we're gonna look at the first stack that is back here that uh is behind the initial shelf that you saw so these well this is my drama high book by l divine so l divine wrote the drama high series which is really good uh, definitely an interesting uh, series to check out i'm hoping to get the rest of them soon but just not right now I have a couple of Anna Marie Macklemore books. They're coming out with a new book this month, or not this month, this year, which sounded really interesting. Mirage, which I heard the second book is not as good as the first one, and I'm super sad about that. And then behind here, I just have those three books, which you can see Patron Saints of Nothing, which I actually got from Deidre, Oh My Gods which I heard about from Miss W.O.C. Reader. And then in this stack, I have two other anthologies of short stories, Fresh Ink and A Phoenix Must Burn. I may do a reading vlog where I read some short story collections because I have quite a few that I just have not read. Uh, How It Went Down, which is one that I'm really excited to read. I have more Brandy 
Colbert, which is not with the other Brandy Colbert book, which is over here, which is Point. Probably should move those together. Um, Dan Danielle, Daniel, Jose Older. Gosh, couldn't get that out. I have two more Sharon Draper books. I usually keep them together. Once again, can't explain to you why my stuff is really just, it's just not organized. But I know where everything is. Copper Sun is one of my favorite books by Sharon Draper. So I have my two Nicola Yoon books. I like The Sun is Also a Star better than Everything Everything. Uh, it just wasn't my favorite, but that's a signed copy personalized to me. And then I have my Angie Thomas books, The Hate You Give and On The Come Up, and I just received a copy of her new book, which is Concrete Rose. Okay, so in the back of this, I just didn't feel like moving those Octavia E. Buller books. You're gonna see my the rest of my Daniel Page collection, which is the Dorothy Must Die series. Like, I've read that entire series. I want to reread it just to see how it holds up. I'm not sure if it will necessarily hold up. Then we have one other one by her, which is Stealing Snow, Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. Some more Nettie Accor for, which is uh, the Akata Witch duology. The Good Luck Girls by Charlotte Nicole Davis, which um, I need to read. Wicked Fox, which I'm excited to read. I just got this one up here, which you can't see it because it's kind of low-key stuck. <laughs> Let me see if I can pull it out. Yeah. Um, A Curse of Roses, which is one that I just got that I'm excited to read because I believe that one takes place in Portugal, which is a little different. The Wrath and the Dawn duology, believe it or not, I still have not finished the second book, which is The Rose and the Dagger. I have A Song Below Water here. Cinderella is Dead. Shuri, which is a... the second one to this book by Nick Stone came out on Tuesday. So I need to hop on that. And if you're wondering like why, so some of this stuff kind of bleeds into each other. So there's some like contemporary um, that shifts over into some SFF stuff because they couldn't fit all up at the top. American Street, which is my favorite book so far by E.B. Zaboy. Don't ask me why these two are not together, but they're both by E.B. Zaboy. Pride was not as good as American Street. This is a Pride and Prejudice retelling, which heavy on the retelling part. Felix Ever After, I'll Be the One, You Should See Me in a Crown, which everyone was reading, The Black Flamingo, which everyone was reading last year. The Way to Stars, Not So Pure and Simple, which was such a great read last year. Definitely a book that looks at toxic masculinity. And then one that I am anticipating reading soon, The Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura, Laura Taylor Naney. So definitely looking forward to that one. Okay, so once again, I don't even know how well y'all can see down here because it's so dark and there's books everywhere but I'm not gonna really get into that stack over there there's just, it's a stack of books over there some Baldwin Zadie Smith the kite runners over there as you get over here you see there's some Zerata Cordova there is an art copy of Gods of Jade and the Shadow which was passed along to me so I have a finished copy and an art copy of that both of those were gifted to me the art and the finished copy Trail of Lightning Song of Race and Ruins Children of Blood and Bone <laughs> and then Children of Virtue and Vengeance, Ray Bear, Best YA debut fantasy of 2020, Legend Born by Tracy Dion. Excited for that second book to come out. And I lied. So this shelf also has all of the book in a month books that I've received because I have nowhere else to put them right now. So that's where they're housed. So this is predominantly, I said that this whole entire shelf was BIPOC authors, which is not 100% true looking at this book of the month section. So all that stuff is book of the month and my camera's not really focusing that well, so I apologize. All right, we're gonna move over to my more so like romance and contemporary show. Okay, so as you can see, I'm drinking coffee as I do this. This is the start of my contemporary slash romance shelf. Um, I have my Alyssa Cole stuff here, not in order. Why should be surprised? Brenda Jackson's on here, Reese Ryan, JC Lee. And then as we go over, we see my um, Beverly Jenkins collection, which is small right now because I just started reading her historical romances. And these are my pride and joy. So, um, Arabesque 
for a very, very short period of time, was publishing some historical romances by Black authors. There was some hiccups with that, which we'll talk about on our Now That's What I Call Black Love channel, but some of them were published, most of them are out of print and very, very hard to find, but I was able to find a couple of them. So Moonrise and then Sunshine and Shadows. I have a third one. Do I know where it is right now? Yes, I do. Actually, I see it because it belongs up here. The other one I was able to find was uh, the Black Pearl, which I will be reading these three soon. All right, and then here we have my Sarah McLean collection. These three are in a series. I can't remember the name of the series. This is the start of another series, The Rogue Not Taken. Oh, Scandal and Scandal and Scoundrel series, book one. And then this is, I think this is in the same series, I think. I did end up getting the Duke and I secondhand because I know there's been a lot of controversy surrounding some parts of this book as well as a TV show, but I wanted to read it for myself. I got this Joanna Lindsay book. I can't remember when I got this one, but this is an old one. Everybody's talking about Joanna Lindsay. I haven't personally read her yet. I want to see what all the fuss is about. Then we start getting into um, so this one more historical romance by Madeline Hunter, Heiress for Hire, which I haven't read yet. I haven't really heard anybody talk about that one. One Hot Summer, which is a cowboy romance. And then I start getting into some cozy mysteries. So I say, what are these called? And then over on that side, I have some paranormal romance, which includes Cresley Cole, Don't Know Why Let It Snow is over there, Sister Soldier, and then The Skeleton Stuff's The Stocking is a cozy mystery, but it's just in a larger paperback form. Okay, so as we go down, we have some more uh, historical romances here. Eloisa James, Eva Lee, Vanessa Kelly, Lisa K. Klepes, another Eloisa James. This one I have read. I read this one in December. I read The Heiress Effect in December, which was sent to me by Bethany over at Beautiful Bookish Bethany. Kerrigan Byrne has been making her way around booktube as well. Sophie Jordan, Rochelle Meads, Suck It Is Blues, which is more paranormal. And then here is where we get into more contemporary type of stuff. So Parachutes by Kelly Yang. I have over here, spoiler alert, I have the entire Shopaholic series over here. Looking for Alaska, more Sophie Kinsella. And this one is interesting. So this, this just came out that um, Jamie McGuire is a racist piece of trash. So I will be getting rid of that book. That recently came out. I had previously gotten rid of her other books because of the fact that they just weren't good, but this one I had annotated. So I knew I couldn't um, I couldn't give that back to a secondhand store and I didn't know if anybody would really want that as like a giveaway because I had written in it. So I don't know, but it's going to come off my shelf, let's put it that way. Um, and then a couple of more contemporary romances. These are some of my more indie publish things that are down here, especially in terms of romance. Some of them are not like this the boyfriend project is not indie published but these Alyssa cole books are all indie published but these are her historicals um let it shine and then let us dream and then be not afraid which i have started which i mean that cover and then i also have a vanessa riley book on here that's a historical romance and then rafe by rebecca witherspoon there's some mysteries down here um and then most of these that i keep down here honestly and these are like arcs <laughs> and stuff that I'm working through right now. So that's what I kind of keep down here. That's why it's such a mess because that's stuff that I currently have my eyes on that I need to basically get done. So I forgot to show this one which was my Eric Jerome Dickey book, Milk of My Coffee. He just recently passed away so it's like a mad dash right now to get all of his books but this is one I already had owned in my possession. Probably end up getting some more from thrift books. Okay so the first half that's in the back here are just some random paranormal romances that I have gotten for like a dollar or less. So this um, Sicky Stackhouse series, Heather Graham, who I really enjoy as a uh, paranormal romance writer. Paranormal ro romance, mystery romance, kind of like fluctuates between the two. Minion, which uh, Brie, Chloe, Erica, Harley and I are going to be reading this month. Moon Call by Patricia Dr Briggs, which I need to read. 
Outlander series. Then this is a mystery series that I want to start, which is the Royal Spyness series. I don't think I own the first book. I got, I think, three or four of those at a library book sale for like a dollar. It was a bundle for a dollar. I miss library book sales. And I don't think that I have the first one. And this is where we start getting a little bit more into my cozy mysteries. So all of these back here are going to be cozy mysteries. It's a lot of cozy mysteries. This is one of the series that I need to continue with by Ellie Alexander, which is the Bake Shop Mystery Series. So I rather enjoy Joanne Fluke. Uh, she writes, I mean, they're super white and super bland, but they're addictive. <laughs> I really do enjoy them and I forgot that I had historical more historical <laughs> romances back here so I have Tessa Dare's books back here another Lisa Clay Pez I think I got that at a library book sale most of my mass markets that you see up here I have gotten at library book sales and they've only been a dollar and then I had a stack of Debbie Maycomber books, which I've read, I think, one or two of Debbie Maycomber books. And, I mean, they, they are what they are. They're pretty decent. I mean, not the best written things in the world for me, personally, but I still enjoy them for the most part. Okay, and then this last section back here, Robin Rose, A List of Cages. Haven't heard that many people talk about A List of Cages. This was really good. Difficult read, but really good. And then I do have a copy of 13 Reasons Why. Jay Asher has done some really crappy, crappy, crappy things. This is a copy that I had uh, when I, I had to read this actually for grad school. So I think I read this around the time that it came out and then I had to reread it for grad school because it came out in time with the television show. So this is a copy that I, I believe, yeah, it's an annotated copy because I was I was studying that for grad school. I have a couple of Jenny Han's books, not a couple, I have seven of Jenny Han's books. The Summer I Turned Pretty trilogy, which was my first heavy like introduction to YA contemporary and it was good. I need to reread because I want to know if it holds up. Of course, the To All Boys I Love Before trilogy, my favorite out of that probably is going to be Always and Forever Largine because it explores some really interesting things. Uh, Speak, which is another uh, Lori Halls Anderson book that I own, which I reread a couple of years ago. I need to reread it again. Super, super important book. Very, very great book. Lori Halls Anderson is a great writer. He uh, what's this called? So this is Stephanie Perkins' books. Uh, what is this? I can't remember the name of this series. The Anna and the French Kiss series, they're all companion novels. Geekerella by Ashley Poston. I've read the second book to this one, haven't read the third one. Didn't feel like it was worth buying, but I already had the first one. I didn't buy the second one, I just read it from the library because I didn't want to buy it. And then last set of books that I have here, you can see some more so if you can sell it in the corner, but that's pretty much it for that side. Sarah Dessen, who has been a uh, moving force in YA contemporary, but has also done and some really interesting and crappy things in terms of comments that she has made in the past couple of years, probably about two years ago now. Abby Glines, I, Abby Glines was really, really big, I think, when the new adult movement was kind of in full swing, and then Red White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuesten, which I believe that Casey's coming out with a new book this year. Okay, so now we're on the other side of the room, believe it or not, which is cool. So I have some DVDs over there. And then up top here you can see I keep a couple of box sets. You'll be able to see it when we get to the other side of the shelf. But that is uh, my Silent Voice box set and Scott Pilgrim box set and then my all-in-one edition of Death Note. And this is where I keep my other YA fantasy and stuff like that. Basically non-BIPOC. Basically white. So <laughs> All of that just to say that. So of course I have the Shadow and Bone trilogy, the Fallen Kingdom series, which is one of my favorite YA fantasy series. It's like YA Game of Thrones, essentially. And that's the rest of the series, which I've talked about a little bit on my channel. I need to do a reread and finish up the series. Unfortunately, the spin-off trilogy is not going to be finished because they didn't have enough interest in funding. Libra Bray books, and behind my Libra Bray books, 
I have just a couple of books that I have that were signed that I actually wanted to give away, which was Blood and Bone, Ink and Ass, and Ink in Glass, not Ink and Ass, but Ink in Glass and Tombs. I want those in a giveaway. They're signed, personalized to me. The Remnant Chronicles by uh, Mary E. Pearson, which I have not read yet. More Carson, Ray Carson. The rest of Ray Carson's books are right here, which is The Girl of um, Fire and Thorns, Bitter, The Bitter Kingdom, and Crown of Embers. Yes, these are old library copies, not from my library, but I bought them as used library copies because I don't have a problem with used library copies. Like, the story's still there. I'm just not one person that needs all my books to be in like perfect condition. It's just not me. All right, so looking at the rest of the shelf, I have Cool Prints here, which I need to read, some V.E. Schwab stuff, Hex Hall, which I just got a copy of. It was one of my favorite YA paranormal books. Some of the Vampire Academy books, All the Stars and Tea, the Lunar Chronicles, which I still haven't finished that series yet. Like one of these days, I mean, it's going to happen. As we get down here, we have baby's keyboard <laughs> and then some uh horror and this one I think is like a thriller suspense what happened to Ali what happened to Ali Greenleaf I, I need to read that one where dreams descend which I heard is kind of like people love it or hate it this is I forget what the name of the series is but it's the bone witch is the first book by Ren Chapeco so I have all three of those. I was actually sent all three of those books, I think, either in December or November of last year. Then I have the Throne of Glass series here. My aim and goal this year is at some point I need to read that series or I need to uh, make a decision of whether to get rid of it. But I don't think I'm going to get rid of it because I did enjoy the first two books. Then I have A Court of Thorns and Roses, which is all three of them, plus that novella, Court of Frost and Starlight, which everybody hates more of baby stuff <laughs> and then girls made of snow and glass which i believe that author just came out with a new book last year and then behind that heart of iron by ashley paulston winter song and then my lady jane behind these books yeah so behind these books i have some YA sci-fi. The Dollmaker of Krakow I believe is actually more middle grade. I haven't read that one yet but I think it's more middle grade. But I do have the Illuminae files back there and then behind this stack I have some more Rochelle Mead and then this is the Half-Blood series by Jennifer L. Armentrout, which I've been meaning to read. So I've read Half-Blood in Pure, but I haven't read the rest. The second half of that series is actually more new adult than YA, which is why I'm itching to kind of get to it. We have the Spelled, Bandit, and Wanted books actually go together. Those are retellings. And then Codename Verity and I'm the Swallow Man are both World War II retellings and or historical fictions and then I was Jane Austen's best friend is also a historical fiction. Okay so this is going to be the last shelf that I'm going to go I have another shelf in my bedroom but I, I need to <laughs> I need to do some work in there before I actually film that bookshelf. So up top here which you'll see is that's actually my reading planner my little inklings reading planner and then these are all the comics and manga that do not fit on the shelves because of the way that they their height so I keep them up on top. That's that Attack on Titan omnibus that I'm so excited to read. That's all of the Wicked in the Divine series, which is so cool. It goes from light to dark. My Fables compendium, Jinji Ito, uh, Heartstopper, some good stuff. And then here is where we get into my manga. So we have volumes 1 through 25 with some volumes missing in between of Food Wars which I will get soon. First three volumes of The Devil's a Part-Timer, The Ancient Magnus Bride, Magus Bride, excuse me, Haiku, Yona of the Dawn, some Black Butler, Judge, Night on Ice, The Way the House Husband's There, my Nana collection. I'm so like, oof! I love that. Just love to see those books together because they're so hard to find now. So these are some of my single issue comics which I'm not going to go through but like when I say single issue so they're like this and they're all in plastic to keep them safe. My child loves pulling them off. Some of these here these are more of like my middle grade graphic novels not all of them 
because Runaways is definitely not middle grade, but Ghost, When the Stars Are Shattered, and then all of these DC Zoom comics, I mean graphic novels, those are middle grade. New Kids Middle Grade, Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy I believe is middle grade, Pashima, Goosebumps is middle grade, American Born Chinese is more YA. And then here we have my Fables comics are kind of all over the place. They're not in order. Like none of this stuff is in order. I have Lock and Key there. Moonstruck is up there. I have The Woods is down there in some areas but mainly this whole section right here is nothing but Fables comics. Then over on this side, I have some DC stuff. I have Black Panther on top, Monstrous is over there, and then I have most of the Morning Glory series, if actually not the entire series, I can't exactly remember. Why the Last Man, some of Lumberjanes is there as well. So this is not double stack. As you can see, this shelf is warped because these um, comics are so heavy. So in the very, very bottom here, I have some adult stuff. So some adult um, epic fantasy. There is some adult, um, more like literary fiction, some adult sci-fi. So the way that this shelf is angled, you're probably not gonna be able to see it that well, but that is the Mistborn series. There's the Reckoner series with, mm, I think, yeah, Skyward's there. All right, and then over here we have actually, these are biblical fiction books. They're actually stories based off of stories from the Bible. So that's Delilah, um, Esther, and then Bathsheba, Pharaoh's daughter, which are, these are some books that I really, really want to get to this year. I have, of course, Robert Jordan's Eye of the World, which I'm going to be reading with Noria, which I'm excited about. And then, of course, at the very bottom here, that's where I keep Cassandra Clare. This series definitely needs to be read this year. If I don't read this series this year, I think I need to unhaul it because I've been holding on to it for a very, very long time. So these two shelves are not double stacked, but we can look back up here. Okay, so on this side, really honestly, first you're just gonna see that we have more Nana. Uh, that's the entire series. I do have the one volume that I believe is 7.8, which is in between volume seven and eight, but it's in Japanese. But I am such a huge Nana fan. Like, I really just wanted to have it. Mainly, I mean, all I can do is really look at the pictures to be honest with you. So behind that, you can probably see I have the Promised Neverland series, Alice in the Country of Hearts, Kitchen Princess, Paradise Kiss, which I'm about to get the uh, 30th anniversary edition because it's so hard to find the single volumes now. So I think I'm just gonna get the, the reprint of that. I have some Skip Beat. I have the second volume of Attack on Titan, which now I'm probably gonna give away because I have the big omnibus, so I don't need the single volume. Okay, so once again, we can talk about my organization skills, because as you can see, I have Black Butler over here and another Kitchen Princess omnibus, even though I've already talked about them, but whatever. I have a volume high school de debut. I have a volume of Orange. Okay, and these are the volumes that I have behind the Food Wars, so um, Oran High School Host Club, Sailor Moon, volumes one through four. I have My Love Story, um, Happy Marriage, Kimi ni Todoka, I think that's how you say it, Bakiman, and then Love Come. Okay y'all, so I hope you enjoyed that somewhat of a chaotic, super chaotic tour. So of course, like I said, I did not pull out each book one by one. It just, it's, I have too many as you can tell from this video to pull out one by one. And then the editing process would have been so crazy. I also do have another shelf in my room but like I said I think I'll probably save that for another time or I may include it when I do an updated tour. This is the first time I've done a full tour of my library since I've been here. I don't think I've actually ever done a full tour of any shelves. I've always done it like try to do it by like categories and break it up into smaller bits but then I just never get back to doing the rest of it so glad I just did all that at one time. I hope y'all like this. If you are like hard pressed to see a more detailed one let me know in the comments below and maybe we could do that like section by section because I won't do that all at once because the editing is just going to be a mess but yeah, let me know. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content from me, click the subscribe button. Hit that bell for notifications. If you're interested in supporting the channel, links will be down in the description box below. If you're interested in following me on social media, all those links will be down in the description box as well. All right, y'all. Have a good day. I'll be back with another video soon. Bye.